So let's continue developing uh, our example. Okay. So we are at the point in which uh, we basically have uh, the form available when we need it. So we press the button and we show the form. We press the cancel button, we hide the form, okay? And we have all the forms implemented as controlled forms component, okay? And you can check everything is working, okay? Yes? Yes, to make uh, the cancel button work, yes. Let's go back to the code. So to have the cancel button work, we need to set uh, show forms to uh, false, right? That's the initial state. And so we need to pass this function or a function that uses, that calls this function to the place where the button is defined, okay? And the place where the button is defined is inside the answer form, okay? So the answer form is a component. And so to pass things to a component, the only way we have in React is to set the properties. And so we create an additional property whose name is close form and I am the one who decides the name I try to give uh, sensible names. I mean, something that is reasonable. A closed form. And either I pass the set show form directly, or I pass a function that does what I'm supposed to do with a set show form. Okay? So this is a function that takes no parameters and just calls set show form false. And I don't care about the return value. Okay? And this closed form will be um, taken in the form component here. We are inside the for ans form component. And we are here, and you see props dot close form. And close form is just is already a function. So it doesn't need to be you know um, used in some ways. Just remember that. Uh, you know, as we saw on the slide, this would be wrong. You cannot call it immediately. This is a reference to a function that will be called when somebody clicks on the button, okay? So that's the way the, the uh, close form works. So add, this button appears, and then if you click on this button, you set the show form to false and everything, I mean, the, the form disappears, okay? And then we need to make the rest work, right? That is the difficult part, okay? So, actually we have a button, type submit, uh, whose name is add, okay? That can be used for the purpose of saying, we finished uh, uh, writing things in the form, right? And we would like to add this uh, uh, new uh, answer to the list. So we need to make this button work. Since it's a submit button, we already know that, uh, uh, yes, just, ah, oh, I forgot to run the server, right? Yes, npm run there. Okay. That was still the old application <laughs> running. It's just on the client side, so everything can work without the server until we need to reload something, right? Okay, so I, I was saying, uh, we need to add the object, okay? So we press add, nothing happens, but what happens in practice is that since it's a type submit button, the uh, um, the form on submit event will be created, and so the corresponding event handler will be called this handle submit, which I just sketched here, okay? 
So I put event, prevent, default. Otherwise, a button like this makes the application reload. And this is a thing I don't want. OK? And then just to see if things work, let's just print a console log. So save and see if this stuff works. So I press add. OK, submit was clicked. Fine. OK, so in short, I'm programming here now. So I'm writing code here. And here, I need to find a way to take all the values from the form, create an answer object, and say to add this object to the list of the answer. OK? And the rest will be done by React again, because that's the purpose of using React. You only change the states according to the logic of React, OK? And the rest is, is done by React, because React gets notified of the fact that you change the state, and it will update all the views accordingly. OK, so let's try to write the simplest code here, OK? And then make the rest work. So we are in the form, OK? So in short, here we should create a new object say const uh, e element, but could be answer, OK? An object. So curly bracket, that's an object. We are creating it from scratch. So it has four properties, text, text. So text here on the left, it's the name of the property of the object. And here on the right, that's a value that we get from the state, OK? And that is, that's the same for the other properties of the answer. Oops, it's not uh, semicolon, it's colon, right? Comma, sorry. Respondent, 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 uh, score. Here I need to decide. Uh, I mean, I would like to have a number in the score. I keep the number in score, that's fine, OK? Uh, otherwise, I need to convert it into a, a number here, OK? That's up to you. We already have a, a score as a number that should work, OK? It's a bit different from the solution I had, but it's fine. Date, do we need a date.js object here or not? Well, it depends on how we handled all the other answers, OK? So actually, let's suppose I don't remember. Uh, let's have a look. So for the other answers, we well, actually created a DJS object. OK, so let's create the DJS object. DJS. And the string as it is should work. OK. So fine. So. Uh, I don't need to specify a particular format. The JS will understand the format, and we understand it's here, month, and date. OK? OK. And then what I'm going to do with this E here? Well, here, there's nothing I can do. Actually, you know, I need to add this object to the list of the answers. But again, the list of the answers is in the same place as the show form, right? It's not here. It's uh, in up in the main component. You know, this is this answers here, right? And so we need to do exactly as we did for the vote answer and the delete answer. We define another function that adds the answer, and we keep it here just for simplicity, because where you have the state, you also have the function that modifies the state. So it's easier. The code is easier to read. I could define it uh, wherever in, in, in my project. But uh, you know, if I define one function here, one function there, that operates on the same data at a certain point, I lose my mind. I, I cannot track all the things. OK? I need to keep everything in mind. That's not good. And also for, for new people reading the project and so on, it's not easy. OK? So function. I, I will define a function here and then pass it as a property, as I just did it 
before the break for the other uh, function, the, the, the simple function to close the form. Uh, function, what was the name? Add, uh, add answer. Okay. Uh, uh, answer. What's the name I used? Ans answer. Complete. Okay. And then, well, let's do the simplest thing and then we will fix the code as, mm, uh, as soon as we proceed in the example. Okay? So how do I add a new element to the array? Well, uh, I showed you last time, right? There, there was an example how to add things. Uh, I can do the concat, uh, I can do the spread and so on. Let's, let's think in terms of the spread. So set answers. You remember, this is a modification of the state that depends on the previous one. We pass a callback, not an immediate value as we did before. With the, with the forms, the value is immediate because we have the new value. We overwrite the old value, so we don't modify the old one. We just take the new value and we set the new value. Here instead, we need to uh, think in terms of uh, the um, uh, old value. Okay, so what's the answer list, right? It's written uh, uh, on the top. Uh, let's put the curly brackets because later we will modify it. So we need to write the return in this case. Return a new array, open squared brackets, a new array with the old answers list, answer list, and the new answer. Okay? Save. Okay. For the moment, it's not used, right? So the Visual Studio says it's not used. It's, it's grayish. Okay? Add answer. Uh, I need to pass it to answer form. Okay? So this answer form starts to be a, a component with many um, properties, props, but that's fine. Uh, what's the name? Answer, uh, add answer, I think. Was add, uh, add answer. Okay. So I pass a new prop to answer form, and now I need to use it on the other side, on in the answer form, right? So. Let's go to the form and let's use it. Props, add, answer, E. Okay? That should work. There's some I little issues that we will discuss shortly, but uh, yeah, basically it should work. Let's check it. Okay? Just uh, when you do a lot of modification, maybe it's better to start from scratch because otherwise you don't understand uh, anything anymore from the console and so on. Okay, so just reload the application. This is just in development. While you are developing, of course, you, you can do anything. Okay, when we are testing the application at the exam, we will not do that unless there's a big problem. But, uh, you know, when you develop, of course, you can do whatever you want. So add. Let's add something, okay? Let's press the add button. Yes, you see, the add has added a new answer to the answer list, and actually React has re-rendered the list, and it has shown something additionally compared to what was shown before, okay? So there's, new, there's a new line in the list of the answers. Okay, so I would say more or less it works. We still need to fix uh, a few things. Okay. So first of all, uh, I mean, when I press add, I would like uh, the form to disappear, right? Because otherwise, I continue pressing add, and you see. <laughs> okay. When you add something, typically the form disappears. You get an update of the view, and if you would like to add something else, you press another button or you do another action, you make the form appear again and you add another thing, okay? 
So, how can I make the form disappear? I mean, uh, we already did it. So, we can do more than one thing, of course. This is an event handler. We can call f other functions as well. I mean, we have uh, this uh, props uh, close form that we use on the cancel button. No problem. I mean, this cancel is not canceling anything in terms of data, just making the form disappear. Okay? I could, I could call it a, as I like. Okay? Just setting a state to make the form disappear. So that's exactly what I need here. Props, uh, close form. Okay? I need to call it explicitly. It has no parameter. Fine. Save it. Okay? Let's try again. Let's add uh, one additional element, okay? Difference, so you can see the difference. Add, you know, an additional element, but then the form has disappeared, okay? That is a, 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 an additional step towards, uh, you know, having a good application. I, I mean, a, a good working application as we expect the application to work, okay? And then, uh, did we already implement the delete? I don't remember. I think so. Was was the delete already implemented last time? I think so, right? Delete, yes. Okay. So let's try to delete these uh, ugly answers, right? Let's press the, the delete and you see what happens. Okay. The delete is not really working well, <laughs> right? Okay. Why? Well, uh, if you understand it now, probably you, you, you are very good in understanding how React works. But, I mean, we need to debug things a little bit, okay? We need to think in terms of what is happening here, okay? Uh, I could give you the answer. I mean, I already developed all the stuff, but I don't want to give you the answer, and that's all, because when you are alone programming either uh, uh, at home or for the exam, I mean, you need to be able to debug things a little bit. So we'll try to debug uh, things a little bit. Okay? If you are in the lab, of course, you can debug, but you can also call one of us and or the, the students that is helping us uh, and, and ask for advice. So that's easier. That's why you should come to the lab. Okay? Um, so what's wrong here? Okay. So the delete answer didn't change. And last time it was working. So the set answer changes the list and the filters and goes uh, to check if the ID is different from the ID I just passed, okay? And if it's different, uh, it keeps it. Otherwise, uh, it doesn't keep it, so it removes it. So it means this condition is, uh, is true for all the new answers uh, that we are in inserting, right? And so, so that's, that's a bit difficult, right, to, to debug. Well, first of all, I if you, well, I if you remember, you could check, uh, let's say, well, nobody has added an ID here, okay? So that's already a hint. But suppose that uh, we couldn't notice this, okay? Let's just debug the application. I mean, uh, you have this debugger, this React debugger that can inspect the state and so on. I mean, let's create a new answer. Maybe I don't, I don't care. Okay. And let's have a look at the answer. Where is the answer? Uh, the answer is in main, right? Yes, there's the state. There are five answers. Okay. So the answer has text, respondent, score, date, no ID. Let's have a look at the another one. Another one has ID4, the other one has ID3, and so on, okay? So, I need to think in terms of what is happening when I'm deleting stuff. Uh, so, this ID, okay. I didn't realize I forget the ID, but when I look f to check what's the ID of the new answer, I realize there's no ID, right? So. So that's a problem, because EID will evaluate as undefined. And also, when you create the list of the answers, you need to pass the ID. And the ID 
will be evaluated as undefined. Unfortunately, with quotation mark, we, we, have n we are not using the ID in a different way that, that makes the program uh, crash, okay? Otherwise, we will get some errors here in the console, okay? If we do e.id.something, the, the program will crash, so we'll get an error in the console, okay? But this is not the case. I say unfortunately, otherwise the error would be easier. I mean, the easiest point from which you start debugging. Okay, so let's try to fix it. We need a new ID, okay? How can we get a new ID, a unique ID? Uh, well, we need to decide how to create this new ID, okay? Who is responsible to create this new ID? Actually, in a real application, you are not creating unique ID by yourself on the client side because there are, can be other people using the application. So this is the typical task done by the server, okay? And we will, when we will have the server connected to our application, we will leave this uh, task to the server to create the final ID for the new answer, okay? So in short, it will be a post with the information and then with the answer of the post, uh, the new ID will come back, okay? As we've developed, uh, uh, when we developed the server part, you develop the API for the post, and you remember that you add this, uh, this dot ID that give you the new ID, okay? Or you can query the, the, the database again and discover the new ID and give it back to the client, okay? At the moment, we don't have the server, so we need to find another solution, okay? The solution I'm recommending here is just a temporary solution until we get a new, a new, um, new information from the server, but we need to connect the server. It takes two weeks uh, for this course, okay? Um, we will need to come up with a different solution. And so, in short, compute a, a new reasonable ID for the new answer, okay? So that's why I put the curly bracket here, because we need to try to compute this new ID here. Okay, I think this place is the best one because there's the visibility over the whole current answer list and so it can try to compute a new reasonable ID, okay? Since IDs are numbers and I would like to them to be unique, my idea is take all IDs, compute the maximum and just do plus one, okay? But this is just for our convenience. We could do, I don't know, a random choice and just check that the random value is not already present. That's still fine, okay? But it's more code to write, so I don't like it, okay? Just because I need to code more, okay? Um, but any, any way uh, that comes up with a unique ID is fine, okay? Unique in, in the sense that it's not already present, okay? And so, let's compute the maximum of all the IDs already present in the answer list. So, answer list, uh, answer list, map, right, E, E ID, and that's an array of all the IDs, right? And then we have the maximum function from uh, JavaScript, that we, we can use, math, max, okay, plus one. Otherwise you do a for loop uh, or if you're really fan of uh, um, functional programming, you can do it with the reduce. But I mean, I'm not pretending that you use the reduce in the exam, okay? Map, again, I'm not pretending the map, but if you show that you use map, at least you show that you know a little bit of JavaScript programming, advanced JavaScript programming. And sometimes it's very convenient like this, okay? Otherwise you need to have for, of, and so on, okay? It's not wrong. I mean, it, the for, of works uh, equally well as the map. I mean, uh, they do the same thing, okay? And here we don't really need a new array, so there's no real need for the map. It's just for convenience, for reading the code, because we are using, we are used to read the map and we know what, what map is doing, okay? And 
Uh, it's convenient in other places. Okay, this is almost okay. Let's say const uh, new ID. That's what what I wrote here. Yeah, new ID. Okay. The only thing you should know and be careful about these things is that max doesn't take an array. Okay, it takes a number of uh, uh, parameters, MDN uh, uh, max. Okay, mat max. Okay, you see that takes a, a, a variable number of parameters. It doesn't take an array, unfortunately. Okay, so you need to spread the array into single parameters. Okay. Again, I, I'm, I don't have uh, the time to, to show you all the possible bugs. <laughs> okay, so some bugs, uh, we try to avoid them, um, as, as, uh, not to waste, waste the time. Uh, otherwise, you, you develop this code, you think there's nothing wrong in this code, but if you don't spread uh, the array, basically the single array will give you nothing in terms of the max, and this max uh, I mean, will be undefined and or, or a, a value which doesn't work and you don't achieve your result, okay? And so, before adding the answer, we, we add an ID to the answer, right? So, answer ID equal to new ID, okay? Yes. Okay, note here, here we don't need to create a new object because the object is already new. It was not present in the list before. So, it's by definition, it's new, okay? The thing that we need to recreate is the array. We cannot do answer list push, okay? Both because we are in a, in a callback, so that's a, just a copy of the reference, okay? Uh, uh, and because the push is uh, returning the number and not the, the array, okay? So that's the correct way of dealing with this uh, problem. Let's try if it works. So let's go back to the application. Let's add something, okay? Okay, oops. Uh, uh, let's reset the application. I don't know what happened. Okay, so let's add one. When you do a lot of modification, of course, the application keeps uh, its state. Uh, it tries to hot update uh, the application, but n sometimes uh, things don't work because you did a lot of modification. Okay, so add. Okay, fine. Uh, let's have a look before pressing the delete and see if things work. Um, let's have a look if there's a new ID. Yeah, ID 5. Okay, the other was ID 4. That's okay. Okay? But the problem was not that we, we were not able to delete the answer. It's that we deleted all the answer at once, right? So let's add an additional answer. So now we have two new answers. Just let's delete the first one. Yes, the first one was deleted and the second one was kept, okay? That it was the wrong behavior before in the interface. And here you see that uh, the, the answer with ID6 uh, was kept and the file was deleted, okay? Always have a look at the debugger system, okay? Oh, fine. Okay, we already, you know, progressed a little bit. Fine, let me push the, the solution at the moment, okay. I, d I should revert this, so let's catch it, okay. Uh, partial uh, solution, okay. Push. Okay, fine. So, what can we do in addition to make this uh, add work? Well, we have the add work, we have the delete work, the, there's the up, up uh, vote, which is fine, it's still working, okay? And then, let's try to do the most uh, difficult thing, 
okay? That is the edit. Okay, so we press the edit button and we would like to edit the answer. So we have a form. We would like to start with the form pre-filled with the values of the answer. Go there and edit something and save it. Okay, yes, that's a question. Yes, that's that's another problem. Yes, let's let's see. Um, what your colleague is doing is telling you. So he is asking, should we reset the state of the form? That's a difficult question to answer at the moment. Uh, well, in theory, yes. In practice, since we implemented the it in a way that the form is shown only when it's needed. When we hide the form, the form, so the component of the form, disappears from the virtual DOM. And this also implies that it loses its state. Okay? And so we, when we make it appear again, it will have a state which is the initial state, the one that we set in the use state. Okay? I hope I, I have been clear. Okay, so we, we, we do add something, right? And so the form is closed now, and we add again, and the form is empty now, right? That's because the form, we can say the component goes out of scope. I mean, actually what happens is that it disappears from the virtual DOM. So when something disappears from the virtual DOM, it means that its state also is lost, okay? So when it's recreated, because you say, well, show the form, the state is recreated, but it's recreated from scratch, so it's, it's reinitialized, okay? But this is a problem, you're right, this is a problem that we will see in the end of this lecture. Because, uh, uh, of course, when you add something, you would like to make the form disappear, as we did, okay? If we, if we don't make the form disappear, the state uh, doesn't change, so it stays there, okay? Uh, but it's not convenient for the ad, because when you add, you would like to have the form disappear, right? When you edit, if you edit something, and then you change your mind, you would like to edit something else, there's no need for the form to disappear. And so we run into this problem, and we need a solution for this problem. But this is the, uh, really the last part of this lecture, okay? But you're right. This is uh, more about uh, uh, how React handles the, uh, um, let's say, introduction and uh, uh, disappearance of the forms from the virtual DOM which in technical terms we will call mount and unmount from the tree of the virtual DOM, okay? But this is a topic for another lecture, okay? Not next week, but the week after. It's an important topic, but uh, yeah, you need to be familiar with, uh, with React and states and forms before we can deal with this, this, uh, um, this topic, okay? It will introduce uh, the use effect hook which I already mentioned, and it's the most difficult tool to use, but we absolutely need to, to learn how to use it because it's needed to load the data from the server and do uh, uh, many things, okay? Uh, and so that's the last big topic about React, okay? And then uh, we will still have to talk a little bit about security, authentication, and stuff like that in application, and more or less we finish the course, okay? Okay, good. So, let's make the edit work now, okay? And of course, we would like to recycle the form. I don't want to write an add form and an edit form separately, because they, they are basically the same form, right? So, we have four fields, date, text, and so on. Just in, in one case, it's empty or, or it's uh, filled up with uh, default values, reasonable default values, like today's date. And in the other case, it's already filled with the values that we have. Okay? So, we need to uh, reuse the components. So, first of all, we need to 
find a way to communicate uh, with the component the fact that uh, we would like to um, pre-fill the values of the, um, of the fields of the form with something which is not the default value. Okay? How can we do it? Well, if you want to communicate with the component, there's no other option than using props. That's the React way of dealing with uh, the distribution of the information in your application. You need to pass a prop. And then in the component, you can check the prop and see if the prop is set, uh, do whatever you need to do, okay? So in short here, for instance, let's say we go and um, um, and decide that, uh, say, we would like to set a respondent uh, not as uh, the empty string, but the empty string or something that we pass, okay? And the same as text and the same as state and the same as score. Okay? Um, so let's say uh, we pass an object that contains four properties. Just for our convenience, we could pass uh, four different properties, but then if you modify the answer object, you need to modify the properties. Okay? Which I don't like because, uh, I mean, property should be self explaining. Okay? If you say uh, object to edit or edit object, like props, edit object edit object, okay? Uh, you could, uh, uh, you know, pass the whole set of properties just with one props of React, okay? Um, so, if the edit object is set, uh, let's use the property in the edit object, the, the field, let's say, in the edit object, not to make confusion with props. Props edit object uh, respondent otherwise the empty string okay and now let's pass a prop with the just with just with this field and let's see if things work okay so in short there's a edit object that's a name i chose that's my choice okay so let's go back to up where we define answer form edit object equal to what now now that's a problem how can i specify the object i would like to edit it's a problem right i mean uh, well actually here I'm lucky in a certain sense that this, uh, I have the whole list of answers, so I can choose an answer, right? So I choose the first, the second, uh, and so on. But who is telling me which answer I should choose? The fact that I press the button, the edit button on a certain row of my table, right? But when I press the button, how can I communicate this fact to my application, in particular to the, uh, uh, to the um, table component, where I have the state with the, all the answers and so on? I need to set this information in some way and say that I'm editing a certain element, a certain object, right? And actually, if I need to store information in my application, the only option that I have in React is having a state, okay? I need another state. So in your application, your application will be full of states, okay? Because a complex application typically has a complex state, okay? There's no problem in creating more state variables, okay? As long as the purpose of each variable is clear, okay? So, const, what's the name I gave? Uh, what's 
edit object ok edit object set edit object use state at the moment I don't have anything to write here I'm not editing anything right either I leave it as it is or I can even pass undefined undefined is a valid JavaScript value I could pass null if you don't really like the undefined okay that's fine okay so this edit object is what I need to pass here okay this edit object needs to be set by the fact that I press this button the edit button on a certain row okay and so when I press the button I have a, a callback so the event handler and this, this event handler should set the edit object in the previous component okay so that this state has changed react distributes the value of the state to the table no sorry to the form it's already in the, ta in the table component to the form and the form will have this value available to make the initialization of its state so the content of each field in the form okay so let's try to do this so uh, in the meanwhile you see uh, well let's reload it okay in the meanwhile you see when I press here well prop said it is not a function that's because I already wrote an handler in the list so the button was already there the props edit is simply not passed yet okay but we need to do as as we did for the rest props delete and so on okay so here uh, was edit uh, no edit I already put it here okay so props edit EID so I need to go back to the answer table edit props edit so it's already there let's go to the new line edit props edit so in short I need to pass to the answer table a function which is called edit that takes as a parameter an ID and it sets the state that corresponds to the object to edit okay so edit props edit so it means I need to pass an edit here edit okay that is um, set edit answer I call it set edit okay and I need to define this function function set edit answer okay and I call it uh, like this just to remember to remind you actually that uh, this sets the value for a variable which is the edit object okay so first of all it needs to find the object okay according to the ID that is passed to this function because remember we start from here where we have this ID okay so the function should take a, a parameter and uh, we need to find the corresponding object and then set it into the state okay so uh, so let's find the object so we have the list the list is answers okay here we take the state directly we, we have no callbacks nothing because we are not calling the set state we just use the state here okay answers find find is a method that search for an object in an array okay so math uh, so find find array prototype find okay 
returns the first element in the provided array that satisfies the provided testing function, so the callback. Okay? Just the one, for me, it's fine. Okay? It's not like the filter that returns an array, just one here. Fine. Okay, so find e, e id equal to id, right? Okay, fine. And this is the object I need. And I can take this object and set it as the edit object with this method. Uh, uh, let's type set edit object okay save okay I just changed the state so let's see if something works not yet but almost okay so let's reload the application let's click uh, on the edit the uh, prop said it is not a function, so something not working yet. Prop said it is not a function. Answer components uh, 25. Edit prop said it. Answer row. Answer table. Props edit, edit. Edit uh, is the name that I should use when I pass it. Let's check uh, with the uh, React inspector, let's say. Okay? If some, somebody of you maybe has already seen where the error is. I, I cannot see it. Let's check, you know, props. Uh, and then there's uh, answer table. Answer table gets uh, the list of answer, delete vote, and should get another prop. So there's something wrong when passing props. Right? I'll answer I know ah, here probably they not showing no vote delete. No, that's the answer form, right? answer form. So I need to sh show. Ah, yes. So this stuff is not to be passed to answer form. It's to be passed to the table, right? Because the button is in the table, not in the form. Sorry for that. OK. So it's the table that needs the function to do the edit, okay? Because it needs to be connected to this button, okay? So now I get the edit and edit object. Hopefully something happens. Not yet, but if you look at the inspector in main, you should have the third state, which is the edit object, which is set to a certain answer. If you click on another one, you see that it changes, okay? So the button works. The only thing we need to do now is also to show the form. The edit button uh, does two things. One, it sets the object to edit, and the second one should show the form. You don't want to press an additional button just to show the form, right? So in the same function, you also do set uh, uh, show form true okay one of you in the break has asked me can I call two set state function in the same function of course it's very common because you have different state you have several states in your application typically many not just several <laughs> okay so it's very common to uh, that you need to modify more than one state okay so let's see if things work so just reload the application, edit, okay. Okay, so the form shows up. I still miss one piece, <laughs> okay? So let's see what is shown, answer form. 
So add as a cross form and this new entry, I'm not sure what it is. So probably I mispassed something here. So again, uh, well, the edit object, yeah, the edit object was was correct, okay? Was to be passed in the form. While the function to set it was to be passed to the to the table because the button is in the table, but the edit object is in the form. So let's reload the application. Let's see if it works. Edit. Yes, you see the Alice here? We only set one field. Now we need to repeat the thing for the other fields. Okay? Yes. Two different props? Uh, you mean... Uh, uh, actually, yeah, one prop is for the answer table, the other prop is for the answer form, okay? In the beginning I put everything here, but it was wrong, because one is a function, so this one. This one is a function that we pass to the table that we would like to attach to the event handler of the edit button. So this, this button. This one, okay? And this function sets, uh, I mean, actually calls the set edit answer with the ID. The set edit answer sets the edit object, which is a state here in main, okay? Uh, yes, uh, uh, the state is passed as a prop to the form, okay? And the rest is handled automatically by React. React knows that the props for the form has changed. So it will rerun the code of the form. So it will re the redraw the form, okay? That's the beauty of React, <laughs> okay? If you have the information flowing correctly through states and forms, when things change, the appearance should change automatically, okay? Here, we need to store the information in, in, the, in the state. Otherwise, we have no way of making this information flowing back to the uh, main component, this one, the main, and then go down through the prop to the answer form for the initialization of the content of the form fields. Okay? So thank you for the question. And um, now we just need to finish uh, the handling all the rest in the form. So let me do a bit of copy and paste, sorry for that, but uh, um, forms final. So I don't, yeah. So in short, we, we change this initialization, okay? So before it was a direct value, and now it's a direct value only if the props edit object is not set. If it's set, we take the value from the edit object. Otherwise, we take, I mean, we, we use a fixed value, the, the, the previous value, so the empty string, current date, or zero, okay? Okay, so we'll delete this stuff, okay? I, I didn't type all the stuff, otherwise it takes uh, five minutes and, you know, for, for something that should be immediate to understand, okay? And so now, let's see if things work. Again, reload the application. Let's edit uh, the first one. Okay, three, seven, uh, I mean, uh, March 7th and so on, four off, Alice uh, three, okay? And now the problem that I was talking about before, if I click, if I click on the other edit, you see nothing changes here. That's the problem you said before, okay? Because the component is still there. Nothing is reinitializing 
the state, okay? Because the state is initialized only once when the component is created. This is the risk of initializing a React state using a prop, okay? That I was mentioning last time during the lecture. And here you see the problem. The problem is that you, would li you, you are passing things through props to initialize a state, but at a certain point you would like to reinitialize the state. Okay? And at the moment we don't have an easy solution. The only easy solution for, for the moment is just to cancel and edit something else. And this works because the component gets destroyed and then created again, so shown again, put again into the virtual DOM, but in the meanwhile it's destroyed, so it needs to be reinitialized. Okay? There will be a way to solve these problems, okay? And today I will give you a very quick, uh, but also a bit dirty way of solving this problem. But in two weeks, uh, when we have the use effect hook, we will have a more systematic way of handling these situations, okay? Okay, fine. Um, we just need to fix uh, the fact that uh, now we are not adding stuff. We would like to add it. You see, if I press add, I have a new element, not an edit, okay? But this is easy in a certain sense. I mean, I just need to call not the answer, add answer, but an edit answer. And I need to write this function, right? So let me quickly go through this uh, stuff. I mean... Um, so, how, how do I know if I'm editing or, um, or, or if I'm um, uh, creating a new answer? Well, if the props object, uh, edit object is set, I'm editing, okay? Else, I'm uh, adding, okay? So what I do if I edit the object? Well, first of all, the ID is known this time, okay? It's the uh, props edit object ID, okay? The ID didn't change, it was not in the form, you couldn't change it, okay? But we need to set it because then uh, we need to understand which, which answer has to be updated, okay? Since we recreated the whole object and we would like to pass the same object back, okay? So with the something like uh, props, uh, props, uh, save, save existing answer, existing answer, which I still have to create, E, okay? Of course, I need to pass this props. Uh, so let's go back to the app, app, uh, uh, in answer form, so save existing answer, right? Let me type it correctly. Yes, save existing answer equal to save existing answer, okay? And now I need to define it. Function save existing answer and this time it takes an object, right? So, answer. So, saving an existing answer means uh, modifying an object uh, in an array. And we saw last time how to do this, right? So, set uh, answers. It's a, a, a state that depends on the previous one. So, uh, we use a callback, answer list. This comes from last, from last, um, yeah, uh, okay, from last set of slides. Uh, answer list, uh, um, map, right? And so everything gets copied unless it's uh, the ID that we are interested in. So if EID equal to answer ID, we give back, uh, oh sorry, we give back uh, the answer, so the new one, otherwise we give back uh, E, right? 
Yeah, that's all. Okay? And so now we understood also the rest. So this just updates the list. Okay? Uh, let's try it. Yes. We are on time. So let's uh, try it with the Harry one. So the second one. Okay? Uh, let's say the score is uh, 13. Okay? Add. Okay, you see that the score has been updated, right? But we still have the same problem as before. We would like the form to disappear, right? Um, and maybe instead of writing add, we would like to write save, okay? Just minor thing, but you can easily handle this stuff. How can you make the form disappear as before? Set to show form, false, okay? Uh, also, uh, there will be something else to set, but I will do it uh, in a minute. Okay? So now, when you edit something, the form disappears. Okay? You would like to edit again? F 14? Yes. Okay. Let's do this minor thing, which is always nice to, to see. So, either add, okay? So, props. Uh, uh, edit uh, object, uh, uh, save, or add. Okay, that's why it was in curly brackets because I already knew I, I needed it. Okay, so let's edit. You see now it appears save instead of uh, uh, instead of add. Okay, and if you just press add, it's save. If you press edit, it no, save, sorry. No, I should props edit, save, or add. Yeah, there's a problem. We need to remember that once we edited something, there's nothing to edit anymore. So, here, set edit object needs to be set in the I initial state, right? Undefined. Save. Okay? So here we have three set of the states. Okay. Uh, let's try. Add. Uh, okay. Uh, let's reset the application. Add. That's uh, empty. Okay? We add something. That's fine. Uh, we edit something. And you see save. Right? 10. Okay. You add, and now you see add. That's fine. Okay? So, one more thing to fix. As we were saying before. Oops. Edit, and then we edit something else and it doesn't change. How can I force it to uh, create uh, the object again? That's the only thing I can do now. Okay? I cannot simply say set, stay, set show form false, set show form true. Okay, because all these updates get uh, bashed together, so put together by React. So this form will not disappear. Okay, so the form will not be destroyed. And so the only thing I can suggest at the moment is that uh, we use um, here in the list, in the no, in the form, okay? We can use uh, the key, oops, key attribute that is the same of the list. Actually, that's a way to say, to react, uh, the same thing has changed. That's the same principle of the list. If the key has changed, you should uh, redraw this component. You should rerun this component. Okay? And so, in short, and this uh, key, okay? Uh, you should uh, write uh, um, uh, DID, if you have it, or something different to, to redraw it, okay? To destroy and recreate it. So, uh, edit object, uh, if it's set, we can use edit object ID, okay? Otherwise, another ID which doesn't exist, it doesn't map to anything that exists. So, let's save it, let's try it. Re reload the application. Edit, edit, edit. You see, things get 
destroyed and then recreated. Okay? But this is, uh, let's say, more advanced stuff. And actually, this is just to complete the example. Uh, it's not so useful because next time we will talk about the ro uh, router. So we will separate where these things appear. So the form, uh, this form will be automatically destroyed and recreated each time we change what we edit. Okay? Because the URL will change. And so it's just a trick uh, that I'm showing you just for completeness, but uh, I'm not expecting you to make this work at the moment, okay? Uh, you, you know it uh, uh, for, the, for the lab in case you would like to, have, uh, to, to work on this and try it, uh, but uh, I mean, it's not so, so fundamental, okay? Also because we have a better way to deal with this stuff. Uh, and it will come later in the course. Last thing I would like to mention today is that uh, in the submission here, this is a place where we could do some validation of the input, as we said. Okay? So let's say um, if uh, the value, let's say, if uh, score is less than zero, we don't want to accept this course. Okay? Just assume this uh, um, uh, that, that uh, we don't uh, want to handle uh, uh, negative scores. Just for an example, I mean, I know that in the example I had this negative scores. Okay? But let's say when we create something new, we would like to prevent. Uh, 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 we, we should reset the, the, the form in other places as well, later. Um, we would like to prevent the addition or the uh, update of an answer that has a negative score. So here, that's a place where you should, uh, let's say, deal with the error, okay? Okay? And dealing with an error, it's always a bit difficult because uh, you need to deal with the user, show the user so that something is wrong. Okay? What I recommend here is that uh, you create uh, and you use uh, the alert. Okay? That's a, a React Bootstrap component. So uh, something like this alert, uh, variant uh, danger just to make it red, uh, dismissible. Um, and then you need to put an error message, something like a string, okay? We can just write error, but I mean, not so useful, okay? Uh, error message. Error, me uh, error message, okay? What is this error message? Again, it's a state of my application. My application is in an error state until I decide that I go out of the error state. So the user has seen the error, and so I go out of the error state. Uh, so error message. You can create uh, states for free, okay? Const uh, error, set error, uh, no, error message was set error message. It's a string, typically. And if it's an empty string, I don't show anything, okay? So I don't want to show the alert, always show the alert, okay? Otherwise, there will be an alert, always an alert, okay? With the button, okay? And um, so, error message, message. Yes, alert, otherwise null, false, whatever. Okay, something that doesn't get rendered. Okay, so let's try. Add, now there's nothing, right? I need to, uh, no, minus one, perché non va sotto null. Okay, uh, minus three, so I didn't, I checked, but I did nothing, right? Set error message, no 
Uh, I don't remember what I've written here, but we are running out of time. Negative scores are invalid. Negative scores are invalid. And then don't forget that uh, you should uh, not call okay, the other functions. Else, okay, else all the rest. You should interrupt handling uh, the, you know, the add and the update. Let's try again. Score, add. Okay, negative scores are invalid and nothing has changed in the form. I didn't go and say add. Okay, I don't need, I, I don't want to call the add, right? How do I make this, uh, this stuff work? Uh, actually, it already works, I don't really know why. It's dismissible, okay, but uh, actually the, the correct way should be that on the, on, uh, on close, that is an event that boost, uh, React Bootstrap passes to us, we just uh, reset the error message, otherwise the error message stays there, okay? Set error message empty, okay? Fine. That's more or less all I think, because if we edit, uh, yes, let's edit, let's save. See, negative scores are invalid, and, uh, and so you need to, you know, change it, okay? So that's more or less, uh, you know, how to handle forms. I know forms are more complex. They are the, the complex thing you, that you need to implement because they are dealing with user input and user input is always difficult to handle, okay? So, Monday, you are, you are uh, working on state. So you are adding the list of films uh, as a state to your application in the lab. And Tuesday, you'll take the list of films and you implement uh, the um, add and edit functionality, okay? So Monday, list of fields as used as um, state and the delete function, and Tuesday, the rest, okay? Monday evening, I will publish the solution of Monday's lab, so you're not stuck with the first lab if you would like to go with the second lab. And, um, I think that's all. If you don't have any questions, everything is already up uh, online. If you would like to start on the lab, you can already start working on the lab. Okay? Thank you for your attention and see you on next Thursday. And my colleague will be on the, in the lab on Monday. Okay? See you.